Well, welcome back, my friends, to another rousing rendition of Choir Boys Cutlery, where today we are doing the off-grid Badger. Three-inch blade, it is D2 steel, grippy G10, liner lock, it has an extra safety lock on it, we'll talk about that in a minute, ambidextrous pocket clip, and it is a tip-up configuration. Before we get too far into the video, guys, 22 veterans a day in this country take their own lives. I'm going to say it literally until it's zero veterans a day. Vets, I love you. Don't fight this fight alone. You're welcome here. We back to blue over here. We support Leo. How do you do that, Scab? Well, we don't break the damn law best we can. And finally, if you are an addict, never quit quitting. There, I'm doing the Uncle Rico pose. Let's get into this knife a little bit. Now, I mentioned I'm the most redundant human being on the planet. So some of this stuff y'all can hear over and over from every video. I'd like this right here a lot. I try to open and close with one hand to show you the ease. Uh, obviously, left-handed is not my strength. This knife did not come to me out of the box. It is one of my good friend Kirk Weiss's knives, who I'm sure he'll put in the comments he wants his knives back. Uh, as he has want to do and we all want something don't we now now Kurt's good enough Kurt actually introduced me uh, to off-grid to work tough to some of these brands and and I am forever he is a brother serious like a good friend he lives a couple streets over from me and he has been absolutely awesome in letting me use these knives and yes I am trying to kiss a little ass right now because I've had this one a long time but Kirk's a good dude and one of my best friends on this planet. I'm blessed. He lives a couple streets over. And my brother from another mother, Jimbo, who's another dear brother, lives a couple streets over. That is huge. And I love them both dearly. Now, in the upper left-hand corner, I'm simply showing again just some... And I'm showing you that little safety lock. I've put this knife on Instagram a few times. If you do not follow me on Instagram, please do so. Choir Boys Cutlery. I try to post a ton of pictures, probably more than anybody ever wishes I would, of all the different knives. Now, not getting this knife out of the box, I don't know the initial sharpness. I can tell you right now, we did this. I did a little sharpening on it. I can tell you, every off-grid knife that I've had out of the box has been sharp. That's just my personal um, experience on it. Now, here we are getting ready for our camping. Look at that. I believe that's some of that Michigan fat wood. Good Lord. And that's a good, good example right there, guys, of what fat wood is. Fat wood is simply a pine that has been saturated and saturated with that sap. And right here, I've been showing this a lot, doing this a lot. One, I'm getting ready for my big camping outing that's going to be on December the 11th. Can't wait for that. We're doing that in celebration of our 2500. We have ordered a preacher from the Kukri house. So everything is in order. We're rolling hard towards 3000, but I am giving out a preacher for hitting 2,500. Now, right here, back to this knife. I like just kind of sitting at night. Usually when I get in from work or right before I go to work or just a few minutes before Meg gets home, just taking about 30 minutes, 40 minutes, an hour, and doing this, it's just like some of the old timers whittling. You can see that bag there to my right. That's actually a bag that uh, John Peters had sent me. And I have mixed every piece of fat wood that you guys have sent. I have got shavings of in there. I've got it from every state that, that sent it. And man, thank y'all. And again, choirboyscutlery at gmail.com is how you can reach me. If you got any fat wood you want to get rid of, send it to Old Scabber. I'll gladly take it. The thing about this knife is this. The handle is three and seven eighths. It's a little bit smaller than I like. However, the width of it, now I did speed this part up. The width of it makes up for the shortness of it. And the only way I can explain that is it fits very, very well in hand. I can get a good grip on it. I can, I can um, really, really grab it. You see right here, again, we're just kind of blowing through this box. Upper right-hand corner, um, I had uh, my dumbass right here. That's two or three pieces of cardboard folded, and every box has that one corner. But this knife, 
like I said, after we cut the polypropylene rope, needed a little sharpening, we sharpened it up. I'd say at this point, the knife is probably a six or an, I'm sorry, a seven or an eight out of our one to 10 scale. It's very sharp. It's done a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of work. And I will touch it up, hone it up before I give it back to Kirk. Now, part of the thing I want to start doing with the pocket knives is just pocket knifing with it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, D-Bad says all the time, a knife just knifes. I've picked that saying up and I say it. So when I say I just want a pocket knife with it, cut up boxes, cut plastic, cut wood, cut, show you guys. Hey, look at them hands. I have some fast hands right here, son. Show you guys. Some de look at that old scab just whipping that thing around, son. You'd never see it coming. Show you guys some different stuff. You make your own determination on it. Turn the damn knot volume off. Just watch the knife work. Now, right here, uh, old scab's doing his zip tie test. This is the patented scab zip tie test, where at one point I ran a splinter right there, I believe, so far up my damn thumb, it about come out my nose. Uh, but I suffered through it. I, I, I heroically braved it. The, the thumbnail injury there and kept going. A lesser reviewer probably would have stopped and just shut it down. Now, right here, oh yeah, there. See, it helps a lot, Scab, when you look at it. And of course, we're gonna do one or two off camera to build up some suspense. I was looking at my thumbnail there. Of course, if I cut the damn thing here and there, I wouldn't have that problem. Now, the belly on this knife is a nice, wide, upswept belly. And that's the only way, kind of a, I won't say a Persian style, but let's call it a Persian style. Just kind of got that good up sweep on it. It's got, it's a back flipper and it's built for slicing. It deploys very, very fast. It is a liner lock. Like I said, it does have a safety lock, like I said, but I will say this. It's a, uh, and you can tell throughout this video, I flipped it open and closed a lot. Um, and again, just ease of showing, okay? Right there. And there you can see that grip. And there, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Again, you see the width of the handle. Some people's gonna like it, some people's not. For me, me and me alone, it fits perfectly. Now, we got some old nylon rope here. This stuff's pretty soft. The Badger has zero problem going through it. And guys, I'm gonna tell you, knives are simply subjective. You're not gonna like every damn knife I show on this channel. It ain't gonna happen. And you know what, I gotta be honest with you, I'm fine with that. We're gonna show a bunch of different knives, a bunch of different styles. Now, would I carry this knife every day? Absolutely, no problem carrying it every day. Right here, we got a little tug on that water hose, but that water hose is, is older than I am, son. So it's, it's built to last. Now, right here, again, pretty good slice right there. And I've explained before, um, there might be a little tug, there might be a little pull, Sometimes, guys, that's just the length of the hose. And like I said, this is probably six, seven, something like that on the sharpness scale. Now realize, I did sharpen it up after the polypropylene rope. However, we cut up three or four boxes, did a lot, a lot, a lot of work on this. Now, the Donnie B all day drop test, the Donnie B all day throw it at the stump test. D-Bad, my brother from another mother, y'all hear me say it a lot, but I love Donnie to death is marching towards 10,000. When he hits there, man, we're gonna have some big ass giveaways, some good giveaways. And I'm excited. He is, I'm gonna link a, a video of his in the description of a knife that he's sending for me to give away at my 5,000. Dude, thank you so much. It is straight up badass. So Donnie's going to 10,000. Guys, like he says, go ahead and like and subscribe. It's free, doesn't cost you a dime does not cost you a dime and I sure would appreciate it. And while you're at it, go ahead and hit subscribe on Old Scabber. He would appreciate it. He's got his socks pulled up to his knees there. I swear to God, I get older every day. Good Lord. Right here, this is that old Hackenberry log. Now this is probably, this started out at four and a half inch diameter. Okay, and we've shaved it down. It's my batoning log. Now listen, the throw it at the stump test the drop test takes on a new meaning with a pocket knife, okay? Yes, we're testing the balance. Yes, we're testing the tip. Yes, we're testing the edge, but we're also testing something else that's very important. We're testing that liner lock, okay? So 
I do not believe it whatsoever in abusing a knife. I don't think it proves shit. I really don't. I am for doing tests um, that shows not only the capability of the knife, but the limits of the knife. Now, here we're doing the John Peter stab test, and this is just an old sidewall tire. Um, I got rid of El Diablo. Uh, they graciously let me keep the two blown out tires that were in the back, so we did a lot of processing. And, and John Peter hit me up one day, he said, man, I think it'd be a good test if you stab that sidewall. That's why we call it the JP Stab Test. John's an awesome dude. He's up there in North Carolina, man. He supports a lot of people in his community, a vet, a great dude. So shout out to John. And that's why we named it that. Now, here's just an old root I found. Again, we're just pocket knifing. I remember years ago, man, my grandfather, Papa Zeb, lived up in North Carolina, up in Wilkes County. And every time we pulled up, Papa Zeb would be kind of at the edge of the woods on a five-gallon bucket. He'd have on a Levi Garrett hat, and he'd be whittling every damn time we pulled up there. Mostly that's because my grandmother would drive you crazy, but it was his way of just chilling. He'd, he was a brick mason. Good man. Good man. And he was a brick mason, and he'd get home at the end of the day, and he'd sit out there and whittle. And he would just pocket knife. Didn't matter. He'd reach down, pick up a stick, just do a little whittling, make some shavings, do some different stuff. And that's kind of what I want to show you here. Because that's what we do, ain't it? Whether we're at work. I, I know a lot of times, man, if I'm at work, especially when I was working utilities or powder coating or whatever, on break or something, man, get a bucket, sit on the end of the truck, and just whittle. Does this knife whittle? You're damn right it does. I love this little off-grid badger. I also love that off-grid does a lot with law enforcement. That speaks to me a lot. I am a big fan of them. The Shredder family, Zeke, Papa, Mama, the girls, the puppies, they are huge off-grid supporters, and we love the Shredders, don't we? They're, that last video with the family out by the uh, Fatwood Fire, man, you got to check that out. The Shredder Knife Reviews, they're awesome. Well, guys, we've got about a minute and a half right here, two minutes. So I want to take a minute. This is an old oak stick. This one right here, of every test we do, this is one that kind of stands out to me. Because if you've ever whittled, if you ever just kind of shaved a limb or something like you know if you pick up that old dried out oak, it's going to tell the truth on your blade. You know what I'm saying? You might just sit there and shave some of the bark off. But if you're not, if you don't have the right sharpness, the right edge geometry, the right whatever, that's all you're gonna do. Right here, where you can see it. You can see the the pieces of wood flying, the pieces of pulp, if you will, flying. Great job, and I love this design. Like I said, it's probably six and seven eighths overall length. Right here, we're doing our plastic cutting test, no problem. It looks good. Well, listen, guys, tonight. On the recovery's edge on cerebral ballsy at 7 30 p.m we're going live with my guy mikey you don't want to miss that 7 30 p.m tonight cerebral ballsy i believe it's november 9th i think that's the date so there it is my guy mikey says it best everything's gonna be all right i'm scab you're not i've enjoyed this one and i'm gone son